Thank you for your interest in the OH Grievance filing system. OH Grievance is an electronic system that will allow bargaining unit employees and representatives to file and track grievances in a centralized location. Agency Human Resources designees will receive notification of new and appealed grievances. Contract designated employees and union representatives to discuss the grievance and respond in the system. The system will send email notifications of actions taken to each grievance. Additionally, union representatives may withdraw or propose grievances to be scheduled for mediation and arbitration where applicable. Furthermore, union representatives may submit issues or questions regarding the system functionality to the system administrator at the Office of Collective Bargaining. The unions that represent State of Ohio employees in specific bargaining units as well as their agency management counterparts and the Office of Collective Bargaining recognized the value of having an electronic forum where all grievances could be filed, tracked, and responded to. All parties worked together to build the necessary components to support such a system. Having one system will minimize the time spent recreating facts of grievance, as well as the time and money spent tracking grievances in multiple forums. Most importantly, one system will lead to a consistent set of information, facilitating tracking and scheduling while improving communication between all parties. When logging in for the first time, the union employee or representative will select the new user link. Please note that the user is not logging into MyOhio.gov. That being said, the user must enter his or her State of Ohio user ID and a recognized State of Ohio email address. If the user attempts to enter an email address that is not recognized as his or her work email address of record, an error message will advise the user that he or she cannot file and must contact a union representative. Additionally, if a user does not enter an email address, an error message will advise the user that he or she cannot file a grievance and to contact a union representative. The user will also be asked to create a password. When creating the password, the user must ensure it is eight characters long. Please know that should a user forget his or her password, he or she may select Forgot Your Password. The system will ask the user to submit a State of Ohio user ID. A temporary password will be sent to the work email on record. The user can then return to the system and use the temporary password to access the system and set a new password. Upon successfully logging into OH Grievance, a home screen will display all recently viewed, created, or modified grievances the user has authorization to see. The system is set to allow union employees to see all grievances he or she has personally filed or the union has filed on their behalf. The system will allow union representatives to see all grievances filed within their worksite or chapter. All users may select which view they prefer by selecting from the drop-down menu on the right-hand side of the screen. Please note that regardless of types of grievances the user wishes to see, the user must always select Go to refresh and reflect the most current information. The user may further filter out the grievances they wish to see by selecting a specific list view. These list views allow the user to see only opened or closed grievances, types of grievance or grievances at specific steps in the appeal process. The user may also choose to sort grievances listed on screen by clicking on the title of the column they wish to sort. Additionally, the user may search for specific information by clicking on Control F and entering the search criteria such as grievance name or agency. Please note that when there are numerous records, they should ensure that he or she selects the Show Me More option at the bottom of the page to expand the list. A user can file a grievance by clicking on the Create Grievance link in the middle of the Grievances screen. At this point, the applicable union logo of the person logged into the system should appear. If the user is an authorized union representative, such as a steward, delegate, or associate, the system will allow the option to file for another by asking if the user is filing as yourself. If a union representative does not select filing as yourself, the system will assume he or she is filing for another member. The system will then require that the user indicate the employee's State of Ohio ID that the representative is filing on the behalf of. This option is not available for union employees who are not recognized union representatives. 
Regardless of who is filing the grievance, all grievance updates will go to the following individuals. Work email of person who logged in, agency labor relations administrator or local level labor relations designee, union headquarters. Updates may go to the grievance work or personal email address if this information is provided while filing the grievance. Updates may also go to the local union representative's work or personal email address if this information is provided while filing the grievance. The grievant and or local union representative should enter additional contact information if 1. They are not the creator and wish to receive email notifications and or 2. They want notifications to go to an email address other than the one on record. The user will then need to select the type of grievance he or she is filing. Only one type of grievance may be selected, discipline, issue, or working out of class. If grievance type selected is discipline, the user must enter specific type of discipline. Please note that if the type of discipline is selected that is not contractually allowed for that union, the system will not allow the grievance to be submitted. If suspension, working suspension, leave reduction, or fine is selected as the subtype, the user will be prompted to indicate the number of days the discipline was. If termination is the selected subtype, the user will be prompted to indicate the termination date. The system will modify the available subtypes if the grievance type selected is issue. The system will also ask if the grievance is a class action and if the grievance pertains to an agency other than current employer of the grievant. If the user indicates the grievance is part of a class action, he or she must indicate the impacted personnel. If the user indicates the grievance pertains to an agency other than the grievance current employer, he or she must indicate agency that allegedly violated the contract. Similarly, if the grievance type selected is working out of class, the user must indicate the classification title and classification number where the duties allegedly belong. Regardless of the type and subtype of the grievance, all grievances must indicate the date grievance arose, the statement of the grievance, and the resolution requested. Please note that the date the grievance arose cannot be a future date. The user will be asked to confirm grievance submission and enter his or her full name. At this point, the user will be notified that he or she has completed the first portion of the grievance and will be given an opportunity to review and edit prior to submission. The user will also be advised that the grievance has not yet been submitted and that at least one contract articles must be attached prior to submission. The user may then select the articles and specific sections that have been violated. The user may attach as many articles and sections necessary to reflect the alleged contract violation. Once contract articles are attached, the user will be taken to the grievance detail screen. The user can then review all information that has been entered or auto-populated from the OAKS record of the grievant. The user may choose to edit, delete, submit, or attach additional contract articles. Please note that the status will remain as draft until user chooses to submit the grievance. Prior to submitting the grievance, the user should carefully review all the grievance information to include the grievance number. The grievance number will be automatically assigned and is comprised of the three-letter agency acronym, the year in which the grievance was filed, the statewide sequential number, and the bargaining unit of the grievant. Please note that the statewide sequential number is a number assigned upon initial draft. This number will be unavailable even if the grievance is deleted before submission. This number resets at the beginning of each calendar year. The user should also carefully review the grievance name, work phone number, agency, work email address, union, work site, bargaining unit, and classification as these fields will auto-populate based upon information pulled from OAKS. Additionally, the grievance supervisor and or union representative and their work phone numbers may be seen if any or all of these fields were completed when filing the grievance. Furthermore, the grievance type and subtype, the date the grievance arose, and relevant information regarding the number of suspension days, termination date, and or grieved classification can be reviewed at this time. 
The statement of grievances and resolution requested, as well as the contract articles cited, should also be reviewed and confirmed at this time. At this point, the user may also choose to attach relevant documents under the Notes and Attachments section of the grievance screen. These documents must be scanned to the computer the user is working from and may include schedules, overtime sign-up sheets, or other documentation that supports the grievance. Additional fields will populate upon submission to include submission date, when the grievance was created, and last modified, and by whom. Please note that the submission date is the official date of record to determine if the grievance was filed in a timely manner. At this point, if the user were to navigate to the grievance's home page, he or she would see that the grievance is listed in draft status and the record type indicates the grievance is a new grievance. It is important to note that the agency human resources designee has not been notified of a new grievance and the grievance cannot be viewed by that designee. When the grievance is in draft mode, the user may still choose to delete the grievance. When a user is ready to submit a grievance, they will simply click on the Submit button at the top of the grievance detail screen. The system will prompt the user to confirm that he or she is ready to submit the grievance. Upon submission, the user will be navigated back to the grievance's home screen. The user can now see the grievances listed as open and the applicable step in the grievance appeal process. The delete option is now removed. Should the user choose to close the grievance at this time and has proper authorization to do so, they will open the grievance and select the withdraw button. Upon submission of a grievance, email notifications will go to the grievance agency human resources or labor relations designee in the agency. The same email will go to the user, also known as the creator of the grievance as well as the grievance union headquarters or chapter president. Please know that if a union representative is filing on behalf of someone else, the bargaining unit employee will only receive notice that a grievance has been filed on their behalf if the representative entered the member's email address in the initial steps of the grievance. As such, representatives are encouraged to include the grievance work or personal email address. Upon notification, the agency human resources or labor relations designee will log in and review the grievance. The grievance detail is now read only. The agency human resources or labor relations designee will coordinate a meeting date with the union representative and or the grievant and enter the date of the meeting into the system. An email notification indicating that a meeting has been scheduled will be sent to all relevant parties. Union representative and or grievant should continue to coordinate attendance and release with the agency human resources or labor relations designee as well as their supervisor. Should the parties need to reschedule the meeting, the agency designee will enter the new date into the system and an email notification will go to all relevant parties. After the appeal meeting has been conducted and the grievance has been discussed, the agency human resources or labor relations designee will issue a response. The response will include the management response detail. This will typically confirm those who were in attendance, the article cited in the grievance, or during the meeting, lists any procedural defects that may have been argued, summarize the party's arguments, and outline the finding. The response will include an overall response of one of the following. Settled. When a grievance is settled, the supporting paperwork will be attached. Granted. When a grievance is granted, the specific remedy will be outlined in the response section. Or denied. When a grievance is denied, the detailed response should outline the arguments submitted at the meeting. The name of the person responding to the grievance will also be listed in the response. Upon completion and submission of the management response, an email notification will go to all relevant parties. There are four ways in which a grievance may be closed. Granted, the agency human resources or labor relations designee will outline a specific remedy and the grievance response will reflect granted. The grievant or union will have up to five calendar days to appeal if remedy is not acceptable. If no action is taken, the grievance is not appealed within five calendar days, the remedy offered will be considered acceptable and the grievance status will change to closed.
Settled. The Agency Human Resources or Labor Relations designee will upload the signed settlement and the grievance response will reflect settled. The grievance status will change to closed. Denied. The Agency Human Resources or Labor Relations designee may deny any violation of the contract occurred and the grievance response will reflect denied. The grievance status will remain as open unless there are no additional appeal steps. When no additional appeal steps are available, the status will change to closed. The grievant or union may choose to appeal the grievance to the next step of the grievance appeal process if additional appeal steps are available. Withdrawn. The grievant or union may choose to withdraw the grievance. This option is available to union members and representatives as determined by union headquarters. If withdrawn, the grievance status will change to closed. There are three ways in which a grievance may be appealed to the next step of the appeal process. Upon denial, if no meeting date, meeting extension date, or response has been entered within 15 days of submission as step one of the grievance appeal process. Please note that step one is only applicable to OCSEA grievances subtypes that include reprimand or an issue not pertaining to layoff, non-selection, or union leave. If no meeting date, meeting extension date, or response has been entered within 50 days of submission or appeal at step two of the grievance appeal process. All cases will close if no action has been taken within 30 days of activation of the appeal button. Grievance forms cannot be modified once submitted unless the grievance is eligible for two agency appeal meetings. Only OCSEA grievance subtypes of written reprimand and issue grievances not pertaining to layoff or non-selection are eligible for two agency appeal meetings. For these OCSEA grievances, the union may make modifications when appealing the grievance from Step 1 to Step 2. However, Modifications to the grievance form are limited to the remedy requested and articles cited. All other grievances go directly to Step 2 and have one agency-level meeting. If additional contract articles are cited or the remedy is modified during the Step 2 meeting, the employee or union must notify the Human Resources or Labor Relations designee during the meeting and submit an attachment to the grievance detail screen within 24 hours of Step 2 meeting. Mediation and Arbitration If a grievance is appealed to the Office of Collective Bargaining, Union Headquarters may submit requests for specific cases to be scheduled for mediation and or arbitration. When a mediation or arbitration is confirmed by all parties, the system will generate notice to the impacted personnel. Changes in the status of the case as a result of mediation or arbitration will also generate email notifications to relevant parties. Issues and questions. Please note that an additional tab will be available to union representatives to notify the system administrator of any functionality concerns within the system. This is only intended to troubleshoot issues related to the functionality of the system or add, remove union representatives. This should not be used to discuss the merits of a specific grievance, as it will be routed to the system administrator and not to union personnel. Should a bargaining unit member or representative encounter issues with the system, please request the union representative or union headquarters submit an issue. In order to do this, the user will need to navigate to the Issues Questions tab, then select Create New Issue Question. The user should provide a name that quickly summarizes the concern and allows for later searches based upon this name. The user should also provide a detailed description of the issue. This will allow the system administrator to quickly understand the concern and or research and assign the issue to the appropriate person where needed. Upon submission of issue or question, an email notification will be sent directly to the system administrator. More importantly, an email notification will be generated to the person submitting the issue. The email will request any additional information needed and or advise of the resolution. Thank you for taking the time to learn about OH Grievance.